This video will be a higher level overview of how antibodies are made. It won't contain all the details you need, just an overview of all the processes that are going on. We already should know that white blood cells in your body will work around and when they find non-self cells, cells with antigens on their surface, they will engulf them. Now there is one type of white blood cell called a macrophage. Now the macrophage has a special job. The macrophage will ingest pathogens when it finds them, but then it will display the antigens on the outside of its cell membrane with the help of MHC proteins. These are then moved around the body in the blood until it comes to your thymus gland. Now in the thymus gland you have many inactive T helper cells. I'll just draw some now. Here's our inactive T helper cells. Now our macrophage makes its way to the thymus gland it's badly drawn arrow and presents the antigen to each inactive helper cell in order to try and activate it. This one here will not fit the antigen, nope. This one here, curve, won't fit, nope. Won't fit, nope. Aha! Uh -huh. This helper T cell will actually fit our antigen. It becomes activated. So we now have one active T helper cell. This T helper cell will now be triggered to clone and clone and be released into the blood. So let's just move over here a touch. So this activated T helper cell is cloned a lot because it's activated. This activated T helper cell is now activated to clone and clone to make many, many, many of them and released into the blood. It drifts around in your body, in the blood, until it makes it to the lymph node. And in the lymph node, it meets up with many different B cells or B lymphocytes. Now through a similar process of matching up these areas, in the lymph nodes, the corresponding B cell or beta lymphocyte or B lymphocyte is triggered to become active. So it is activated. There is a physical contact between the T helper cell and the B cell and a chemical signal is released when they match up from the T helper cell to activate our beta cell. Now our beta cell clones and clones and clones to again produce many, many, many of these. So we're cloning and cloning and cloning and ending up with a much larger number of these in our lymph node. These clone for a while and eventually start to produce another cell, a plasma cell. Now the plasma cell is the cell that finally makes antibodies. The plasma cells are pretty much like our beta lymphocytes or B cells, except they have more cytoplasm and a lot more endoplasmic reticulum to allow them to make many, many of the specific antibody that fits our initial antigen. So this makes our antibodies. Also at the same time, these are making memory cells. Now the job of the memory cell is that next time you get the pathogen in your body, you already have the recipe of how to make the antibody. How many of you have woken up in the morning going, oh, I think I've got the flu. By lunchtime, you're fine. You may well have had a flu you've had before. Your body knew how to make the corresponding antibodies. You got rid of it very quickly. There's also some postulation that T helper cells can directly make memory cells, but as far as I know, we still don't have any proof of this. This process in the lymph nodes where the beta cells or B lymphocytes are activated and they clone and clone and clone yep, via mitosis is called clonal expansion because we are expanding the number of clones of the cells that can produce antibodies so that we make many of these. Clonal expansion. This is one of the words IB likes us to use. Now back at the beginning, if we go back, where we were selecting which T help cell fitted was called clonal selection. Another term the IB likes us to use. 
Now these two processes, clonal selection to select the right clone and then clonal expansion to make many of them are what makes up antibody production.